welcome to oblivion. Hello everyone, and welcome to this episode of Project Shadow. I don't get to use that intro very often, but today, if you can't tell, I am kind of broken up and raw on the inside. Just got back from watching Avengers Endgame, and I felt that it was appropriate for today. Hi, if you're new to the show, my name's Charlie. You might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset, especially if you're reading my new book. Crucify My Love, or listening to its companion podcast, Mask of the Gods. And, okay, here's what I'm going to try to do. Because, um, I just came out of a movie where I basically spent a lot of time crying, and I'm a little raw on the inside. It was amazing. So, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to try to talk about this film the best I can without spoilers. I will give spo a spoiler warning before we go into the spoiler section, but there will definitely be a spoiler section to this podcast. Um, there may actually be an entire week of spoiler episodes next week because there's so much I want to talk about, about what I just saw, and I don't know if I will have time to say it today or not. And I don't know. We'll have to see. So let's start with the hype. This may be one of the most hyped movies I've ever gone to. The early reviews that I saw were, I mean, beyond amazing. And it was all true. It was all true. This Avengers Endgame is the culmination of, what, 20 films in 10 years. All coming together in one movie to make for a cinematic event that I didn't think was possible. There are tie-ins in this movie going all the way back to the first Iron Man movie. And all throughout, there are little things, little nods to everything that has happened along the way. And everything that got us to the point where we're at. So, it, it, I, I, I can't imagine how they pulled this off. I really can't. The writer in me is so envious of the talent and manpower that went into making this film because the acting is phenomenal. The, the writing is amazing. The directing is outstanding. This should be the first superhero movie to seriously win Best Picture at the Academy Awards. Not just because of its story and themes and impact, but because there will never be another movie like this because even if marvel's able to pull it off again even if we go through phases five six seven and eight and they give us another event like this and even if it is as good or if dc gets their act together and finally gives us this kind of a movie it will inevitably be compared to this film I mean, it's, it's hard to explain how much this movie is indebted to the previous 10 years of films that came out before it. I, this, this is a pure comic book cinematic experience. And if you remember from my review of Into the Spider-Verse, I said that I didn't think a movie could be more of a comic book. Well, <laughs> Avengers Endgame 
is kind of the ultimate comic book movie. It's that ultimate crossover comic that you're excited about, but you don't think they're going to be able to pull it off because that's going to be too many characters and too much story and too many things that have to happen to make it work to get there. And along the way, you keep getting surprised. Like, I didn't think Avengers would work. I, I I hate to be all nostalgic, but that's that is a side effect of having gone to this movie. I didn't think the first movie, Avengers Assemble, would work. I didn't. The idea that they were going to start all of these separate franchises and all these movies and then have all the characters come together in a cohesive narrative and move forward, I, I didn't think that would work. And it did. And I didn't think Infinity War would work because I couldn't imagine how the Guardians of the Galaxy would get folded in next to Thor and Captain America and everyone. And they did. And in a lot of ways, I felt like they had peaked with Infinity War because you brought all of those characters together, all of those franchises together, all of that history together and told such a powerful, moving, character-oriented story that didn't feel that it was dictated by plot. And that's the where I was wrong. They did it again. This movie is motivated from the characters. And that's really hard to do in a sci-fi fantasy epic Thing like this because yeah everybody lost something at the end of infinity war and you expect that to be the motivation but there are like i said there are references going all the way back to the first iron man movie that you if you've been watching this whole time this movie, I, I think it was Dan Stevens who said it, this movie is your reward. And he's right. When you get, like, I, I I don't really know what to say. Like, even, and it's not even like, I don't know what to say without spoilers. Because it's going to be hard enough to talk about this movie once, you know, the spoiler warning drops. And I can actually talk about the events of this movie because really from the beginning through anything that I say is a spoiler, which is why they were very, you know, they're being very careful asking people not to spoil this movie. I will say if like me, you assume that the trailers were all from the first like 30 minutes of the movie. Yeah. For the most part, the trailers are, are almost exclusively from the first like 30 minutes of this three hour behemoth. And the movie goes by so quickly, even given how long it is and how much happens in it, it feels so short. And I don't know how they pulled that off. There are not enough superlatives for me to throw at this movie to make it. To, to explain to you how good it is. There really aren't. I mean, the pacing, the character arcs, everything fits together. And not only within its own internal logic, but the way they connected the events and the character growth that we've seen from these characters over these previous 20 films. Like, it, it's... It's phenomenal. It is so powerful. It's so moving. You will laugh. Well, actually, let's get, let's get the order correct. You will cry. You will laugh. You will cheer. You will be shocked. You will be horrified. You will cry again. You will laugh. You will laugh again. You will cheer. You will cry and then you will be just torn apart for the last hour of the movie. In all the good ways. In all the right ways. In all the ways that I never thought a big budget 
superhero movie could do. This movie does it. And like the bar for what a finale should be. Like I would be so like shaking in my boots if I was Dan and Dave doing Game of Thrones or if I was working on any of these other projects that are at this like big culminative mo moment right now because you're going to be fairly or unfairly compared to this movie and what it was able to accomplish so economically so powerfully and without missing a beat if you have not seen Avengers and you don't want to be spoiled I'm not going into spoilers yet but guard yourself and get to this movie as soon as possible because there is a lot that happens in this movie that people are going to want to be talking about and when I say a lot like a lot that that's why I'm I was very honest like I might spend most of next week just talking about different parts of this movie because there is something there that I could go on for about an hour on for like dozens if not hundreds and I try to keep these episodes down to like you know 30 minutes because that's what you all have asked for and I'm going to try to do that I'm really going to try to do that but you're going to want to get to this movie as quickly as you can because these the, the spoilers will not remain unspoiled very long if they're not already, already out there because I'm pretty sure some troll has already started posting them somewhere and if you don't want to know what happens and go into this movie fresh and I think you probably should want to go into this movie as open and fresh as you can because it there I I don't think knowing a spoiler like if I told you the end right now I don't think it would matter I really don't because the road to getting there and the emotional impact that is built into the film to get just it's so powerful what happens and how it happens and how it gets brought about like I don't think this movie could be spoiled even if somebody wanted to just because it's so well written and so well crafted that even if you knew everything that happened I, I'm pretty sure just on writing alone the writing and the acting alone you would still be blown away when you actually see how it happens. And that is a testament to the craft that went into this movie. The Russo brothers have given us some phenomenal films over the years. And this movie just shows their pure talent because they got performances out of Chris Evans and Chris Hemsworth and Robert Downey Jr. Like I knew they were good actors and I've seen them give great performances over the years. And, you know, true to form, I mean, even Rocket, man, that that's huge because Rocket is a CG raccoon. And yet through the voice acting by Bradley Cooper and really good direction and animation rocket is so, just so good. Like everyone deserves an award for this. Like I, I am thunderstruck by just how well they were able to put it together and the level of subtlety that it has in the moments when it needs it and the fact that 
it's written so well that even if you haven't been watching for the last 10 years, even if you didn't do like we did and do a movie marathon leading up to the release of this movie to remind yourself of the things that came before, even if you didn't do any of that and went into this movie and this is the first Marvel movie you ever saw, I still think you will be blown away because the writing, the directing, just everything is so good. It, it's beyond belief. So I'm going to go into spoilers now. So if you do not want to be spoiled by me for this movie, leave now, go see it, come back. We have a lot to talk about. Incoming spoilers in five, four, three, two, one. I wanted to say this in the non-spoiler part of the review, but I felt that it was a spoiler to say it in the non-spoiler part of the review. Anybody who didn't want spoilers for this movie, who listened to my prediction episode, I am so sorry for spoiling a lot of this movie for you. I got so much right in my predictions for this movie. Like, I think actually, I think all my predictions came true except for one. Um, I might have to listen to that episode again and do a full scorecard, but I know the predictions that I keep making when talking to Brian and some of my other friends, and every one of them came true. Every one of them came true. And so I, I am sorry for having done that prediction so well. That's one of the reasons why I think that even if you've seen, even if you're spoiled, you you will still enjoy the movie because I actually predicted the vast majority of this movie and I still wept like a baby for over an hour at the end because like the waterworks turned on and they just didn't stop. They just didn't stop. Okay, so I don't know where to start with this movie. I really don't. Um, uh, there's so much. Let's just start at the beginning and see how far we get, shall we? Okay, so the movie opens with Clint and his family and his family getting dusted and Hawkeye becoming the Ronin. And I was so afraid that's what was where it was going to start because of that trailer where we see him with his daughter teaching her how to use the bow. The reaction scenes, like getting to see how everybody dealt with everything that happened. That, that emaciated Tony Stark when Captain Marvel finds the ship and brings them back to Earth and everything. Like, Tony looked bad, man. Tony looked rough. I have to give it up for the special effects team because they did such an amazing job with this film in so many places. But I think the standout thing... And for me was Thor's journey because the most amazing thing about this film for me is it really is the, the ensemble cast, but this is Thor's Captain America's and Iron Man's movie. And while significant things happen to a lot of the characters, in this film, they are the heart and soul of this movie. Seeing how hard Thor took it, that he didn't stop Thanos. That moment that, because that when that line comes back, when he cuts Thanos's head off, and they say, "What? What? Are, what the hell are you doing?" And he says, "I went for the head." And quotes Thanos back over Thanos' dead body. That just devastated me. Because it's not that I don't think Thor has ever killed anybody in combat before. But I knew that he wouldn't get any kind of closure. That it would be so empty. And to see that it was. That five year time jump. When we find out that he basically became a drunk living in a house in New Asgard with Meek and Korg and 
when he like goes after the dude that's like trolling Korg on I didn't even pay attention to the game. I think it was Fortnite. I don't know. I I, I really wasn't there was so much going on, I don't even I, I'm not even sure. But yeah, yeah, just seeing him with a beer belly and not being played up for laughs, but really for just the pathos of the whole thing that he lost his father, he lost his brother, he lost his home world, and then he failed to stop, from his own perspective, he failed to stop Thanos from snapping his fingers when he had the chance. That that was phenomenal. It, it was powerful and moving, and seeing his story arc as he has to kind of put himself back together, and that old rift from Civil War between Tony and Cap and how it embittered Tony Stark and oh it it there's so much in here I mean I, I really don't know what to talk about because so much happened that was just oh my god I mean this really was such a well-written and well-structured story. And, you know, I have read some of the comics leading into this and, you know, was familiar with various ways that the Infinity War could end. And I kept waiting for Captain Marvel to put on the gauntlet or for Nebula to put on the gauntlet or... Uh, Okay, so let's go back. Um, I'm sorry, I'm really scattered because so much happened in this movie and th there's no easy way to talk about it because so much happened. Okay, um, we're gonna, yeah, like I said, we're probably gonna have to do multiple episodes on this, but I guess the way it ended, that fight at the end, where literally everyone we have ever met in the MCU shows up. Everyone that we have ever encountered ever comes to fight in the battle with Thanos in New York. The I, I've seen so many battles, like epic multiple people army on army battles since the Lord of the Rings movies came out and kind of made that popular. But and I feel like I'm just being hyperbolic about this movie, but this was probably the best of them that I've ever seen. And not just because it was like the most recent with the better te best technology to make it really look like armies clashing or anything like that but because of how the fight was choreographed and the way events went back and forth in a way that felt natural, in a way that felt like it worked. It really did feel like a battle and it plays with your expectations in so many ways that you think you know what's going to happen and then just constant reversals over and over and over again until you finally get that moment at the end. And I know I've already said spoiler warning, but if you thought it was just going to be mild spoilers and don't want spoilers and didn't check out, this is the end of the movie. When Tony steals the stones from Thanos... Like, he doesn't steal the glove, he steals the stones and uses them to dust Thanos' army. I was devastated. I was destroyed because that is the moment that Tony Stark's storyline has been running towards this entire time. That's the, that is the ultimate pinnacle 
of where we're going to because his last line there before he snaps is I am Iron Man and snaps his finger. My, oh my goodness. This is a man who went from being selfish to self aggrandizing and self important and then self critical. And just, I mean, by the time we meet him in this movie, he is so jaded and broken and it's not like he comes full circle it's that he finally answers the questions brought up in iron man 3 of is he tony stark or is he iron man and when he says those words when he says i am iron man and snaps his fingers that's when you know he's realized his entire life was leading to this he built the glove that Stan that thanos stole he built the tech that caused all of this to happen. He's the reason he and his father are the reason all of this came about. And this is him taking responsibility and doing what he said he would do and save everyone. And I knew I, I knew going into this that he was going to die. Like, if you remember my prediction episode, I said that Tony Stark was going to die at the end of this movie. And he does. And it's so beautiful and so powerful and so poignant because he sacrifices himself which is the final stage in his growth as a person from a purely egotistical, self-absorbed millionaire to be able to selflessly lay down his life for his friends and his family. I'm about to start crying again. Um, it is such a powerful and moving moment. And it is the heart of this movie it is the moment that this entire film is moving towards and that echo with when Spider-Man finds him and he has that moment with Peter Parker and then with Pepper and it's so phenomenal. It, it's just, it, it, it's hard to express how amazing it is that they were able to take his entire arc and it's not just self-sacrifice. Like, this is everything that Batman v Superman did not understand about self-sacrifice. This is that purest moment where you have gone beyond ego. He has a wife now. He has a daughter. He has Morgan. He understands better than anyone because he's been thinking about it since... The Battle of New York, the first Battle of New York, what it would take and what he would be willing to give to save people and to make it right. And this is his just perfect culmination moment where he saves them. And yeah, it, it is everything. Like, that moment was born in Iron Man 1, and it was born in the cave. Like, he was going to sacrifice himself from the moment in the cave when he watched his doctor die. That is the seed. Like, if this was a worse written movie, we would have gotten a photo, a quick montage, and it would have started there of him watching him die and going through all of the things that he learned all the way just leading to this but it knew it didn't have to do that it knew it didn't have to take that time because we've been with the franchise and we've watched him grow and develop as a character this whole time and it's more than anything 
the heart of this movie. And it's not even the only sacrifice in here, because I haven't even talked about Black Widow or any of the other stuff. Okay, I'm going to do one more segment on today's show, so we're going to be 15 minutes longer than normal, but I'm not going to stop here. Because there's at least one more thing that I have to talk about, if not a thousand more things that I have to talk about before... I'm even close to ready to say that I'm done. And that's Steve Rogers. Um, uh, Chris Evans is such a good actor. And I wish him all the best for everything that he does after this. Um, I have watched his career for so long. And I've loved him in so many movies outside of him playing Captain America. Like, if you if you haven't seen any other Chris Evans movie, definitely check him out. He's he's an unsung hero of cinema. But as soon as they introduce time travel, and I said this in my sp- what should have been spoiler predictions episode on this, that he was going to go back to Peggy. And it every time he time traveled, I just sat back and I just said to myself, I just whispered in the theater, he's going to 1953. He's going to 1953 because that's what we know. Peggy met her husband, who is never named in 1953. We never find out who she married. And it always kind of stuck with me until I just made my own little headcanon that somehow... Steve finds a way to get back to her because I couldn't imagine Peggy falling in love with someone else. And at least not in the way she had with Steve. And I actually wore my Agent Carter shirt to the movie. And I'm wearing it now as I'm talking to you. Because my, my deepest wish is that I would see Peggy in the movie. And I wore this shirt because then if that happy ending that I wanted for the film didn't happen, I could at least look down and say, you know, say to myself in my own like stupid way that Peggy was there because I wore her there. I'm, I'm sappy like that. You know, I get really, you know, I'm sitting here crying over a Marvel movie talking about it. So you can get a sense of who I am as a person, but, um, his entire story arc, being able to make amends with, um, with Tony and being able to save Bucky and have Bucky by his side. And to see him as an old man sitting on the bench and give the shield to Falcon, who I called it would be the new Captain America. Um, yeah, it, it was a moment that I was so happy for, especially when we got the flashback and Oh, I gotta pause it. I'm sorry. Oh, I am a sentimental fool. Getting to see Peggy finally get her dance with Steve. Because Peggy Carter was one of my favorite characters. And I loved the TV series. And I was so upset when it ended. Because I think we could have gotten so much more. So much more Peggy than we got. But seeing her get her happy ending. And knowing that she did get to spend her life with Steve, and Steve got to spend his life with her, is the best happy ending that this movie could have given us. Because, you know, they have to save as many people as they can, right? Because, you know, 
it's a superhero movie. Like they have to save the day. And so you can argue all day long about how they're going to save the day, but you know, you know that eventually they're going to have to save the day. And to be able to see that and to know that it mattered so much how they were able to bring them together and that moment when he hands him the shield and names him the new Captain America was one of the most beautiful moments I've ever seen in cinema just because you could you could see in that moment not only the acting but that these people were friends and that they knew they weren't going to be working together like this again and that all read through the movie like it oh it was so beautiful it was so beautiful and oh before i forget to say it there is no i should have said this in the non-spoiler part there there isn't a uh, post credit scene kind of at the very end you hear something being hammered and it reminds me of the sound from the cave when tony was building the first iron man suit the mark 1 and i i don't know why that happened or what that means but there's just a sound and then the Disney logo comes up and then it's done but oh my and we still haven't talked about Black Widow and her sacrifice and how she tricked Clint into letting her how she literally saved Clint to save her own life which again is perfect for her arc And finally answers some of the questions that Loki asked her in the first Avengers movie. Is there a way she can wipe out so much red? Well, she gave her life to save the universe. (sighs) Okay, so I've talked a lot about the events of this movie. There are a lot more that I want to talk about, but they're before we get to the end of the podcast, because I'm not going to go for an hour. Um... There are a couple things that I think we have to talk about going forward. And then, I, like I said, I may do some more episodes throughout the week, next week. But one, Gamora. Gamora is, theoretically, still alive and out there somewhere. And Quill is going to hunt her down and find her. And that's going to be the plot of Volume 3. Which is the perfect story arc. Because in Volume 1, he learned the value of family and found a family. In Volume 2, he learns that family is more than blood. And in Volume 3, this is where we're going to get the Love Conquers All storyline. I just feel it in my bones. But I don't think it's just going to be Gamora Loki's not dead and I know that's going to be like a far afield thing but I've been good at breadcrumbs so far so hear me out on this there's a moment in the movie where in the Battle of New York the first Battle of New York when they go back in time Loki steals the Tesseract and escapes one We know that that doesn't change too much of the timeline because when we come back, we're still in New Asgard and Thor joins the um, Guardians of the Galaxy, the Asgardians of the Galaxy, (laughs) in a very funny scene. But Loki had the Tesseract for an indeterminate amount of time, which would have allowed him to possibly set some things up that would have made his storyline play out differently so how did that work which tesseract did he get 
Now think about that for a minute. That may sound like a weird question. That may sound like an odd thing to bring up. But remember when he gives Thanos the Tesseract. That may or may not be the Tesseract that was in Asgard. He may have stowed it away in case he ever needed it. And somehow through his witchy ways, because he has survived before, found a way to keep himself alive. And I would not be surprised if we find Loki in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Wouldn't be surprised at all. Because of the missing time with the Tesseract. Because we don't know we don't know what happens. But apparently it wasn't enough to change the timeline. So Loki had the Space Stone. Loki could have traveled and done something or learned something or anything, right? I'm, I'm just calling it. It's purely out of left field. There's no reason to believe that Loki is de isn't dead. But I have a feeling that we're going to find him. That he's he's alive. And that's going to play into the plot of um, Volume 3. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I'm not sure how, but that that's going to be a thing. So, if it wasn't confirmed in our mind that the Black Widow movie was going to be a prequel, well, she's dead, so yeah, it's going to be a prequel. Um, yeah, this, this movie, man. Okay. There's one last thing that I have to bring up before we get to the end of the episode and we're almost there at Tony Stark's funeral. We get this long camera pan from Pepper who puts the, uh, arc reactor into the flowers back. And as we're going back, we go from group to group to group to group and we see all these faces that we recognize and know throughout. Now, I've only seen the movie once, and I was bawling when this happened. But there was a guy. Before we get to Happy and Morgan on the um, porch, there's a guy standing beside, standing by himself. He's the only one there who's standing by himself that I don't know who he is. I did not recognize him. And if one of you do, please let me know, because I'm not sure who that was. He looked like some, somebody out of time, you know, out, out, you know, somebody new. Um, my personal theory is that that's Nova, and that's how they snuck him into the movie. But I don't know. I'm not sure who that was. But when, if I get it, you know, I don't know that I'm going to get a chance to go see the, see it in the pain palace again, because, you know, it hurt a lot going to this movie. My joints are not happy with me, but I think I saw somebody different, somebody new in there. And I'd be really curious if anybody can tell me who that was. He's the only person standing by himself. So, yeah. Well, that's it. Well, that's not it. We're, we're probably going to revisit the end game several times going forward. But that's going to be the end of my review today. I hope, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this episode and the app that you're listening to me on allows you to rate either this episode or the podcast in general, please do so. That helps me out a lot. It tells the algorithm to share me with more people. If you got a buck you can throw my way, just... Click the community support link in the show notes. You can join the project at one, five, or ten dollars a month. That helps me out a lot. It helps me to do everything that I do, and especially going forward, I think that's going to help more than you know because I think I want my fiction to be free. I think mainly free from Amazon. Listen to my episode on exclusivity, and if I break, if I break out of that exclusivity like I'm thinking about doing in June, then my income for my books is going to drop like a rock. But anywho, if you can support, 
if you can join and support the project, that would be great. If not, if you don't have the money or don't feel like it right now, that's okay. Just share this episode with people that you think might enjoy it. If you want to get in touch with me, I'm C. Dorset on Twitter. You can download the Anchor app, follow Project Shadow, and leave me a voice message. Or um, just go to projectshadow.com and you can find links to all my social media and everything that I do there. I, I am so grateful to have gotten this movie and I just, I'm amazed by it. Anyway, I'm going to go try to put myself back together. Until next time, don't forget, have the fun. Bye.